Today, I want to touch on a topic that I kind of brushed over whenever I originally talked about Juicebox's um, footsie guide. There was just so much to unpack that uh, this topic kind of just slipped through the cracks. And so today, we're going to cover it in its own video. But before we do, if you enjoy this one or any of the videos that you might have seen on this channel in the past, consider subscribing. We're close to 3,000 and I'd really appreciate it. One thing that really hit home with me in Juicebox's footsie guide was the part where he says intermediate players get obsessed with being comfortable. He didn't quite say it in those words, but that's what it boiled down to. Intermediate players find something that works, they get obsessed with what works, and then they get stuck doing it. They get comfortable. And that can lead to complacency and also leads to you developing a flowchart or like an autopilot that works majority of the time. And this autopilot will get you through a lot of games. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're winning, but it's good enough to let you put up a fight that you feel happy with. And so when your autopilot is beating 80 to 90% of your opponents, when you finally run into that 10% that's actually good at the game, that can actually beat you, you have to make a decision on whether you're going to go back to this autopilot. This is if you even realize you're autopiloting. If you realize why you're losing, you decide whether you're going to go back to what you're doing that usually works for you or whether you're going to innovate and you're going to figure out what you need to do to fix it. And that's sort of where I'm at. That's sort of what I'm doing now is that I realize some of the characters that I play, I have an autopilot and I'm stuck in my ways. Like, for example, when I go back to Karen, the character that I pretty much started playing fighting games with, my combos are anything but optimal. When I block a DP, I have to consciously think about the follow-up that I'm going to do. It's not muscle memory yet. Because in all the time that I played her, all I did was like crouch medium punch, stay medium punch, tenko, and into like shoulder. Something very basic that I knew I could do every single time and I'm comfortable doing. But when I switched to Colleen, I understood that I needed to learn that route. I needed to learn what to do when I block a DP because I was more experienced now. And then I started to learn what optimizing was and like doing two bar combos, one bar. When you want to do these different combos um, based on what resources you have and based on what your opponent's health gauge looks like. But when I try to take that knowledge back to Karen, it's like I have to fight that muscle memory. And a lot of the times I lose. I just do whatever I'm comfortable doing because I'm kind of in an autopilot mode. I know that I don't need to do anything more than I'm comfortable doing to beat the person that I'm playing. And that starts to bring up another question like, what am I playing to do here? Like if I'm playing ranked, am I playing for points or am I playing to get better? Because if I'm playing to get better, then I need to try these things that I'm learning. But if I'm playing for points, then sure, get stuck in your autopilot and you know, you kind of plateau. Because the autopilot only takes you so far, right? You, you can beat 80 to 90% of people with your autopilot and then that you run into that 10% and that's a wall. And I think everybody comes to that realization differently, right? Like for me, um, when I was getting to the higher ranks, I, I felt like I was getting better. And then I would play people who were like Grandmaster or like way better than me in battle lounges and just get waxed. And it's sort of like a wake up call to you to say that, yeah, you can beat the diamond players, the plat players, whatever it may be. But there are people in much higher echelons that are doing things that you haven't even learned yet. You have to get humbled, right? And whether that be in ranked or whether it be in tournament, whatever, it's uh, a good thing. And when that does happen, I think some people quit, obviously. Some people don't have an open mind, so they don't want to learn how to get better. They kind of just want to beat their head against the wall and play their own game, which is, I mean, that's fine. If you want to play the game a certain way, you can do that. But the remaining people, I think, start to um, figure out how much they just don't know yet. And for me, it's like a continuous cycle of that. Every time I feel like I'm learning something or I'm getting, um, I'm on the cusp of making a great discovery or whatever, uh, I just learn that there's so much more to it that I have to uh, sit down and learn or sit down and just think about. And it all usually pertains to neutral and like your behavior in neutral. It's such an ambiguous concept because nobody can really teach you how to play proper neutral. You really have to learn how it works best for you. I can give you every tool. I've been given every tool to be successful in the neutral and to win the neutral game, but it's just how you perform and how you are able to interpret the data that the opponent's giving you. Every movement and every move that they throw out is data, and you have to learn how to filter that and figure out what is useful data, what's unuseful data, and how you're going to react to it. And when you start to do research into, like, how do you play better neutral and, like, watching all these videos, it, sometimes it raises more questions than answers. That's why I felt like Juicebox's video was so good. It gave me the answers to some of the questions that I had, and some questions that I didn't even know I had. I think the problem is there's not, um, one, that many people who are able to uh, think about neutral that way like think that critically while playing the game and two, being able to articulate their thought process there are some very good players that I've talked to who 
don't know why they do what they do, but it works. They've gained the knowledge through experience, they're just not good at articulating it or teaching it to other people, which is fine. And then there's the other group of people who are very good at the game and can tell you why, and they have like very detailed explanations on very ambiguous concepts. And they've really thought things out and they can tell you why things happen and why people play the way they do. It's very um, interesting. Hopefully one day I can be that for you guys, somebody who's articulate who can tell you why I'm doing what I do and also be very good at the game. <laughs> but yeah, if you take nothing else away from this video, um, don't get comfortable. Don't get complacent. Don't be afraid to try new things. It's definitely a trap that I've fallen into in the past and on multiple characters on multiple games. But it's better that I realize it now rather than later and try and fix the issues that I do have. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, consider subscribing. Thanks so much for watching.